That's right, folks. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Dice Tower Christmas Buying Guide. This is a series of videos. Uh, all these games that we're talking about are available online. You can find them at funagaingames.com. Let's get to the video. Welcome to the Dice Tower, a video show all about board games. Today, we bring you part of our 2012 Christmas Buying Guide. Today, we'll take a look at five games. Our category is... Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Today we're talking about party games. And this is one of the things that I think is great for Christmas time because a party game is the kind of game that anyone plays. Absolutely. Uh, you always, we always want our friends to play games, but these are the games people will play. Hey, buddy, I have a game I want to play. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> it only takes six hours. Now, these, Where's everybody going? <laughs> these games are not that way. Um, so here we go. First game is Wits and Wagers. Now, there's actually three versions of Wits and Wagers. There's Wits and Wagers, Wits and Wagers Family, mm -hmm. and Wits and Wagers Party. In fact, today I was at Walmart, and Wits and Wagers Party is at Walmart. Yeah. Um, so you can find that there. But my favorite is still the regular Wits and Wagers, and all of them essentially do the same thing. Yes. It's a game in which one person you get asked a, a piece of trivia, and everybody guesses the answer. It's a numbered piece of trivia. Right. And then you put the answers in, in order, and then you have to guess which answer you think is the closest to the right answer without going over. That's it. So if I say... Right on the right one. So, so if you might ask, what's the date for something, or how many, what percentage of people like Z, you know, in America, and whatever. 2%. <laughs> and no one knows what the answers are, usually. So some people hate trivia. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, no, I love trivia, but I like a fair fight. And if someone's super smart or geekier than me, mm -hmm. I can't win. And Wits and Wagers, the field is completely leveled. Right. And it, another good thing about the game is the fact that it goes to huge amounts of players. It, it's seven players, but you can play on teams. Yeah, and uh, like you said, it levels the playing field because if you don't know the answer, then write a number down and bet on the guy you think knows the answer. And so you come out on top either way. You know what I mean? And... The fact that it's widely available, you can get it anywhere, like you said, it's it's a great party game. Absolutely, if if you have friends who have a trivia pursuit sitting on the shelf still, get them this game. This is a great trivia game. Wits and Wagers. Word on the street from Out of the Box Games. This is the deluxe edition, the party nice. case. Ooh, but there's also a regular edition and a kids edition. In this game, there's a bunch of letters that go down the middle of the street. And on your turn, you get asked a category like, what's your favorite food? And so you might say spaghetti. So then you move each letter of the alphabet that's in that word. So S would move over one, while T would move over two times because it's twice in there. And you want the letters to get all the way over to your side of the board because then they're yours. You can lock it in. But your opponents on their turn, they'll guess words and they'll try to get the letters back. So there's two things when you're guessing. You're trying to guess a word that will get you a lot of letters, but also the letters that your opponent is about to score, you want them back towards your or side. You, or you can try to lock one. If you're one step away, you need that one letter, boom, lock it. Yeah, and it's um, so it's, it's like a tug of war over, you know, 20 letters or so. The vowels are out. There's no vowels. There is vowels in the kids' edition. It's one, yeah. And uh, it's a great, simple word game. And this is one of the simplest word games. It's really easy to get into. It is, and it, you don't have to have a huge vocabulary, and you can play on teams. You, well, you have to play on teams, because yes. there's only two players, yes. basically. And that helps, because you're all shouting out, oh, what about this word, about this word? And that, yes. it just makes it fun. Yeah, and it gets rid of that. Um, I think some, some people are scared off by the Scrabble kind of entry point, when some people are really good at Scrabble. Here, you even have the playing field, and everybody can have a good time. That's right. You can know as many two-letter words as you want. That will not help you here. <laughs> This is probably the most complicated party game on the list, um, but it's not its not that complicated. No, no, it, no. But it, what this is, essentially, the resistance, is that all of you are uh, playing together, but some of you are traitors. You're all part of the resistance, but some of you are, you know, double-crossing spy scum. And that's essentially how the game works, is each turn, you'll send a few people on a mission, and the people who are double-crossing agents can ruin that mission. And you have to figure out who those double-crossing agents are before it's too late. Uh, lots of back and forth oh, in this yeah, lots game. Lots of chatter. Um, 
a great game to play with friends, great game to laugh over. Quick game, too. I mean, these, this game goes for maybe 20 minutes, right? and then it's over. And you'll never play once. It's the game that, once it's done, you have to set it up again and go again. You know, it's that kind of game. Great for a party atmosphere. Just a wonderful, you know, get together and, and have some laughs and have some fun kind of game. And it's five to ten players, which is also a the big group. thing. And it plays just as well with all those. I've played with every single number in that, in that area. And then if you want, you can add in all kinds of extras in the box. But just the base game alone, I think, is worth it. Yeah. There's also another version of this called Avalon, which is basically the same thing, but set in King Arthur time. This is Dixit Odyssey, but there's also Dixit. There's Dixit 2, which is actually an expansion, and there's Dixit uh, Journey, or I don't know. There's, Journey, yes. There's a whole bunch of these Dixit games, but they pretty much are all compatible. And what they are is you're going to show a very weird picture. You'll have all these weird pictures in your hand on these really giant cards. And you will play one face down, tell everybody anything you want. You can say, this reminds me of Uncle Joe, or... This, you know, this gives me nightmares. Everyone oh, else... vassal on a bad day. <laughs> everyone else puts the card down. We turn them over, and everyone has to guess which card you put down while hoping that people are actually guessing for theirs. Can lead to some really hilarious times. Oh, it's a wonderful game. Um, nice, easy entry point. You know, if you have a crowd which is scared of the whole getting up and acting in front of people or drawing because they feel they're doing a bad job, this is a great game to break the ice with. Uh, it lets you be clever if you want to be clever, but you can just be obscure sometimes too, and you get away with that. You always have really interesting cards at the table. Great, great group game. Yeah, this and this is this is such an easy entry point. Like oh. you said, I mean, anybody can play this. In fact, this game is going to be often compared to Apples Apples. It has a similar feel, but to me, once you play this, you I would likely never play Apples Apples yeah, again. It's I very think. serial. This game has just has a completely different kind of wow. Right, and you can use the same cards over and over again. And since all the sets are compatible, compatible, that's really cool because there's so many. I have like every set in here, and oh, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's all the artwork is gorgeous. Really neat. Odyssey. Fix it. Most of you played Whisper Down the Alley when you were kids at some point or other. You know, where you whisper something to the next person, they whisper, and by the time it gets to the end, it's different. Mostly because the guy in the middle deliberately messes it up, so it's funny. But this is the same thing, but it's with pictures. And you say, well, I could just get some paper and pencils to do that. Well, yeah, you could, but Telestration comes, it, this is such, it comes with these nice pads with erasable markers. It makes yeah. the... It makes the whole process so much easier to play games with. Yeah, absolutely. You can just pull out the box, throw it open, give everybody a pad, a dry erase marker, and then it has the cards with the suggestions. You don't have to come up with something. You can pull the card and it says uh, donkey, and you, you draw down the donkey, pass it on. The next person looks just at that drawing. Right donkey on the next page. No, go right, ugly horse. You know, whatever they think that was. Eating, eating clovers, and then you and have to then draw the that. And the next person does not look at the original drawing. They just look at the latest thing written, and they redraw. So, you know, you write, you draw, you write, you draw, and then at the end you flip through them and laugh your butt off. Yeah, of the five games that we've mentioned today, this is the one where I don't care at all if I win, ever. Uh, I mean, I, I, in fact, we don't even play I've to win. We just scored. play. I mean, I've never played this game and scored. It is that fun. Once you play one round, everybody's in. Nobody cares about the score. It's just funny. And you're going to have a great, that tense time while everybody's sketching and kind of cackling to themselves. And then the big reveal at the end, it's a great game. Yeah, you think this one causes the most laughs, right? I think so. I yeah. think it does, yeah. <laughs> this is, I mean, they're all, some of the, Dixit's pretty funny too, but this one, and this is the 12-player party pack you can buy at a regular game, which goes to six players, mm -hmm. but I mean, why not enhance it? So anyway, that's Telestrations. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower. You can find all the games mentioned today at www.funagaingames.com. Fun Again Games has the world's best selection of board games. Get them now in time for Christmas. If you found this guide useful, pass it on. Tell others, maybe even give it to someone as a guide for what to buy for you. Reviews of most of these games with more details can be found at Dicetower.com. Thanks for watching. All right, party's over. Go home. All right. <laughs>